All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Darren Dawson, who is in Colorado Springs, Colorado. How are you doing, Darren? I'm doing great. I bet it's nicer in San Diego. Fall is upon us in Colorado. So uh, I'm sure it's beautiful, though. It is. I got Pikes Peak out the window. It's great. Oh, fantastic. And Darren is one of the co-founders of BombBomb. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is human-centered communication. Uh, so let's get straight into it, uh, uh, Darren. When you talk about uh, human-centered communication, I mean, what do you mean? Define that term for me. Yeah, it's when we actually care about the recipient maybe more than ourselves in that sending experience, wherever that communication might be. If it's an email, if it's in text, if it's LinkedIn, I think uh, the problem that I'm seeing and that we're seeing is that it's just like, we, we can't stop sending stuff constantly, right? Like I call it digital pollution. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy now. It's, this, um, it's been accelerated through the pandemic we all just went through. Uh, we all couldn't be in person. So what do we do? We just sent Sent more of everything, you know, uh, more emails, more LinkedIn unsolicited messages, more texts, more unsolicited phone calls. We just up it all, and I think I would love us, I'd love to see us all get back to a more human approach to building relationships and communicating differently. Yeah, no, I have to, I have to agree with you, and I think, uh, as you said, I mean, I think it started, it started pre-pandemic for sure, because I think people were getting a little bit tired of never communicating with the human or never being communicated in a human way as you communicated with in a human way, as you mentioned. And obviously the pandemic has, has really you know, brought that uh, in, into light much more. Um, because let's face it, to your point, I mean, there's so many tools out there and, and over the pandemic, like LinkedIn just turned into a spam tool as well. Right. So, so what, how do you advise people to take a, maybe a, take stock of what they're doing and take a step back and look at what, what, how they're actually executing? Yeah, look, I mean, so at BombBomb, Bomb, we, we believe that humans have intrinsic value, meaning that unlike any other creature on the <laughs> planet that we Very controversial point there. It, it could be. It could be. But I believe that we no, communicate no, no. differently. Yeah, like I'm, I'm seeing you right now. And I, I mm -hmm. feel like I know you a little bit better than if I was just another piece of communication on a white screen yeah, with yeah. black text, no matter what that medium is. I, listen, I'm not against things that help us do our jobs more efficiently. I'm not. I just think we need to find moments that matter in these processes, whether they be sales and customer success internal communication where we get back to building relationships again. And I think being face-to-face, -face, whether that be on Zoom, whether that be actually in face-to-face -face or we use asynchronous video, um, you know, that, that's a better way to do it. And then, so my, my pro tip is simple. It's really like, hey, is this for them? What value am I creating for the recipient? Is it valuable or is it not? Is it about me? And in a lot of times it's about us because we've been told, you might be hearing this being, well, I got to do that. They told me to send that. Well, yeah, well, but try and frame that in a different way. Even if they told you, you might, are you getting a good response or aren't you? Is it getting through? Is the message being heard? If it's not, you're just being ignored. When you say like every communication you send, you're training the person on the other end to ignore you again or not, right? You don't, you don't get a lot of chances to build a, a relationship anymore, right? So with the yeah. pandemic, we were secluded, we were put away. <laughs> so you had to do these things, but just again, ask yourself, am I building value? Am I solving a problem? Am I helping this person? I think that's a great place to start. Yeah, I know, no, all, all great points, Darren. And I, and I think that's, uh, that unfortunately, not, a lot of, not enough people do that because, as you say, maybe they're under instructions, you know, you got to do X amount every day and just, you know, fire and forget becomes a, a very tempting thing to do, particularly if you got the tools for it. So how do you start to actually flip this over and start to communicate and make sure all your communications are done in a human to human way? Because I just don't think people know, a lot of people know how to do that. And they just get caught up in just sending stuff, as you say. <laughs> I do. Well, first of all, I think less is more. And I mm -hmm. know I am 
the other, I am maybe in a lot of ways, not a, a message that anyone wants to hear, right? Like that we just feel good when we send all this communication out that even incrementally, if we get, you know, 5% or 3%, I, I really want to challenge that this is acceptable. That is it? Because I might also say that that means 97% or 95% of that was ignored or, or just not welcomed at all. And, and did you leave a good experience in that person, person, human, or did you leave a bad one? Did you help the brand and yourself or did you hurt the brand and yourself? I don't think we're really thinking about the hurt as much as we are <laughs> the incremental win. And so that's one thing, just less is more. So, and are we really solving a problem for a customer that we know, right? Like and that could, again, across the board. And, and I'm going to flip this a little bit into internal communication too, because I think we do this internally in our organizations as well, just a lot of stuff. Um, but going back to, let's just talk about the sales process. Mm -hmm. Are we really articulating the problem that we solve? Well, when we're going through negotiation on a contract, are we showing empathy? Are we showing kindness? Are we being human in that experience? I, I always like to use this as an example. If, if you're thinking about two companies, you, you've mm -hmm. identified, they both have the same solution. Okay. They both really cost about the same. And, you know, maybe company A has some features that company B doesn't have, but company B has some features that company A doesn't have. If they're very much similar, why do you choose one? You have a problem, they can solve it. Why do you choose one or the other? Or God forbid there's three. What do you do? Yeah. How do you decide? And I, I believe, and you might disagree with me, but I believe people still buy from people they know, like, and trust. Okay. And so I think it's very hard to build know, like, and trust and experience of your business without either being face-to-face -face or somehow building a relationship in some way. And so what I want to help people do through a human-centered experience is give them the feeling of, I like this company better than the other one. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, a very human thing. I want to put you know, the human face on your brand. And I, and I believe that's through your people. So let's put our people back in these motions again. We've, yeah. we've taken them, we hired them for all these amazing <laughs> abilities to like communicate and what's their, what's their executive presence like? What's, and we build hiring teams to do this. And then what do we do? We kind of shove them and take all the superpowers of our people and we, we handcuff them. We limit yeah. their ability, in my opinion. So I just want to get people more face-to-face -face more often. I think that's a better way to do it. Yeah, and, and I think there's a huge hunger for that right now. But I, I totally do agree with you because, yeah, we do. We, we hire people and we hire them for their interpersonal skills and all of that. And then we hide them behind electronics. I mean, let's face it. I mean, do you know anybody who works at your nowadays who works at your bank or your phone company or anything like that because you just get uh you just when you call up you just get phone trees and things like that or you get your right, standard emails and yeah. but okay so based on that let me ask you a question do you feel like does that make it easier to change banks or not what is it of easier course. to change banks now i think it is yeah. right I don't, yeah 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 I don't when, you have, when you have no relationship when you have no connection with a human being or anything yeah it makes it simple to change because yeah and here's the other point i think darren as well today not just banks but everything it's really easy to change yes very easy it's simple and sometimes it's simple to change the technology we're using right we we yep. spend a lot of time trying to make it sticky i'd even say we spend a lot of money it's called cost to acquire the customer to yep. get customers but then we just kind of fail on the experience that we provide on the other side. The, how are we retaining them? How are we making them feel us, feel our brand? I think this is a problem. So I'm passionate about it. As you can, but I, I just think it's yeah. important. You got to think about it. So I always want people just to think about it. If you, if you think anything I'm saying makes any sense, consider changing some of these processes. <laughs> Yeah. Why do you think it is, uh, Darren? Here's, here's another one that I think I, I found a little bit fascinating during the pandemic. And um, a lot of salespeople who are fantastic uh, face to face walk into a room full of people, no problem, command the room, walk into a networking event, you know, great. 
but they struggled on Zoom. They struggled on video. They didn't even like turning the video on. Uh, they just found it. So what, what, talk to me a little bit about that, because that was such an interesting yeah. phenomenon, how people, it seemed like it should be an easy switch, but for some people, it was a really yeah. tough one. This is, the, I'm glad you asked. This is the problem, right? Like mm -hmm. it is it's something about that little light that we're both looking at right now. It turns <laughs> out you're like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I, it is a, a people issue. Okay. So video is zoom, whether it be bomb bomb, you know, again, asynchronous, synchronous, mm -hmm. what we're doing. That is the problem that we spend a lot of time trying to help people think about this. I think they don't know what to say. Ultimately they get stuck here. And it's, it's not unlike when we all got in the sales, maybe, I don't know if you remember this, I do leaving voicemails was new really it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. phone calls, uh, how all those things that we were doing, it's like that again. And for a long time, we've trained everyone to think video has got to be perfect. Maybe for me, you know, I'm, I'm about going on 47, I'm 47 years old, going on 48. So I remember the time and it was just the 10 o'clock news was the end all be all. And it was very, looked very professional, professional is how it had to be. So there's us that think like that. And then I think with some, some of the younger folks, it's everything on social media is perfect. The world is perfect on social media in a lot of ways. Like what we're producing needs to look a certain way. I mean, filters. And so, and that it's like, well, I don't look perfect. I don't sound perfect. Um, that's how you look. That's how you sound. Okay. That's the harsh way, but it is a real feeling. It's a real emotion. We got to address it. And so mm -hmm. when we coach people on that, we spend a lot more time coaching people on this than we do using software. Using video software is not the hard part. And frankly, some people are you are listening to this, you have video software and you're not using it because of this and your people aren't using it because of this. We spend time helping them build confidence on camera. What do you look like? What's behind you? Clean that up. It's easy. It's not a big deal. We help transition folks to this. I think everyone went digital sellers, right? Or mm -hmm. yep. digital yep. customer success. And then we went um, remote or remote with a hub. We changed the names of them, but we were not helping them understand this problem. So yeah, you gotta, I would say, look, if you were going to their boardroom, would you dress any differently than you are right now? Mm -hmm. If the answer is yes, change how you look. Um, smile, it's okay. Practice, send a couple of the people you know. Um, you know, um, juice yourself up, like build the confidence. This is an old sales tactic, right? Making a yeah. hundred phone calls is tough as well. Um, yeah. you got to get kind of into the motion of doing that and, and, and build that confidence. So we work a lot with our customers to get through this hump because it is, you hit the, hit the nail on the head. It's yeah. a confidence, a people problem. It's a confidence problem. We think everything has to be perfect. It just doesn't. Yeah. And it's funny, it's like, because um, I'm, I'm a little older than you, and I'm old enough to remember, you know, well, first time ever hearing myself recorded on a cassette tape. Um, for those of you of under a certain age, you can I, Google, you can Google, well, cassette, yes. yeah. <laughs> Google cassette tape for anybody who's too young. Yep. Um, and the first time you heard your voice, you go, ah, that's not me. I don't sound like that. And everybody else sort of says, no, nah, actually yeah. you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's the same thing on video. I mean, people go on and say, oh, I don't look like that. And you go, mm, yeah, you do, actually. Yeah. But people want to see people. Okay, this is my yeah. thesis that we actually desire human relationship. We desire to connect with people. And I think it helps us to stand out because it's that standing out that ultimately wins us these opportunities and keeps customers longer. I think there's another issue if I could that we should yeah. talk about. I, Absolutely. I just came from a retreat with a bunch of executives and from all over the world. And it was interesting. Everybody had the same problem. Retaining and recruiting talent right now is a big yeah. problem, right? So if you're, if you're a manager, you're a director, you're an executive, look, we have got to start building relationships with these folks, no matter where they are. We used to be able to do it at the office. If you can't do that anymore, consider building it through video by either sending them personal uh, notes of congratulations, gratitude. I'm glad you're here. Is there anything I can do for it? We need to start serving these people in a new way use the technology to do that. Um, people leave leaders. And if they don't, it's the same as the bank, right? We just talked about it, John. You know, it's so easy to leave the bank. Well, it's so easy right now to switch companies. 
if you do not have a relationship with that team, they will leave you. How are you going to change that? What are you going to do about that? I would say send gratitude videos, uh, congratulate them on hitting quota, congratulate them on, on just staying with it through a hard time. We've all been through a hard time, right? Um, these little tips go a long way. Every time I send one, I blow them. They are so love. I love working here. Thank you so much. I can't believe you did that. You know, for me, if I'm, if you're the CEO, yes, you should be finding the people on the front lines and telling them, I appreciate you. I'm glad you're here. We can't do this without you. It is so simple and it will change. If look, if you have a retention problem, I guarantee you, if you start doing that, that will change. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I think, I mean, I think, unfortunately, I think culturally, and, and I don't mean this just about America, I mean, I think globally and everything, we've gotten away from politeness and gratitude and all of those things. <laughs> They've become kind of old, yeah. And the thing is, and the sad thing is, Darren, what you just said there is when you show gratitude, when you show politeness, when you just show interest, you're going to stand out, which is great if you do it. It's a sad reflection, though. It, 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 it's crazy that, yes, if we show this, that we are greatly above the curve, right? I, you know, a lot of talk is about, you know, Generation Z or millennials. No, get we all need to get over that. Yeah. And we all need to start helping these folks grow in their careers and advance. And that's what they want. Why shouldn't we be doing that? Now, the problem is a lot of us want to, but well, Darren, what are you going to do? They're, they're now everybody is at home and well, I'm giving you an answer. Like you got to start thinking about using this technology to advance that, that retention metric, or, Hey, go on the recruiting trail. If you got a great mm -hmm. candidate, because we're all dealing with this right now, send them in the video. Hi. Hey, I just wanted to see if you want to get together for coffee. Do you want to talk? Can we do a zoom and get to know each other? You're going to win. If you're the CEO and you do that video and you help your sales team get that top candidate, Who's competing against, we're competing against everyone now, right? I'm, I'm in Colorado. I compete against New York, San Francisco, Austin, Tech, mm -hmm. wherever it is. It doesn't matter. San Diego. We're all competing now, all those companies for the same talent. How are we going to win? We got to step mm -hmm. up and show ourselves. This is my talent. Like I'm, I'm good face to face. You handcuff me when I'm not, you know, another email, who cares? No one cares about that. So I'm just trying to challenge people to think about it differently. And that's what this is what human centered communication is about. Yeah, I love it. And and just go back to your point is, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of easy for us to uh, to complain about the generations, whatever. It's, yes, Z, it's Q, very whatever easy. It is. It's very easy. But at the end of the day, um, we have to look at ourselves and look at the behaviors we model, because as as I mean, there's, as you know, there's so much uh, you know conflict in the world and people having to go at each other all the time. But it always comes back to the end is like, I can rant and rave and I can tell you what to do. But if I act differently, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I say. So modeling behavior is the most important thing. So there, so in many ways, we have to lead the way. 100%. I can't agree more. I think it just because that's not how we did it, or that's mm -hmm. not how we came up. It really doesn't matter. This is our team. Are we yeah. going to help them? They desire growth. They desire um what we know, are we going to, how are we going to transfer that to them? And again, many of you might've been doing this, but then how are we going to continue to do it when, you know, everybody wants to work remote? Got it. Well, how do we continue to grow folks in spite of not being with them in person at the workspace? We have to be very intentional about that. We have to create time for that. I just think it's really important to do it. Yeah. And I love the fact that what you just said there is that you got to be intentional about it because absolutely. I mean, we've run a largely virtual company for a long time, like way before the pandemic. So we transitioned very easily during that period. But to your point, we've been able to build great relationships across the globe and between team members and all of that. I mean, to the point of sometimes you can't remember that you haven't actually seen that person in the flesh for a long time, sometimes <laughs> ever. Um, but you have great relationships. So for those who think it can't be done, of course it can. It is being done all the time. It is. You know, we've been doing a synchronous video and asynchronous video for a very long mm -hmm. time too. And uh, we have customers all over the world. And it, you know, I, I, I never, it never gets old hearing it though. You might know this too. When you finally do meet them person in person, it, it's not, it's like you've always known them, right? Yeah. It, it does change that. And again, that's when we're communicating, our brains are going, that's a human. 
talking yeah. to me. And no other creature on the planet is like this. Our, our hand motions, our inflection, our tone, all yeah. of these send more information to our brains about who this person is, what their intentions are. Are they sincere or not? Um, do they care? We're always trying to read threat, non-threat, right? And we need to be non-threat for the most way. But have you ever had an email misconstrued when you get that 50th LinkedIn request that is not no one I've ever known before? It just, yeah. we just are training people to ignore us. We need to help people know trust, empathy, passion, um, problem solving. This is how it gets done. Yeah, listen, that's fantastic. A great way to, to end. Uh, I love it. Uh, all of Darren's information and Bomb Bomb's information will be below this video. But before we go, Darren, please do tell us a little bit more about you and Bomb Bomb. Absolutely. You know, we started this business a long time ago, really quit my day job in 2012. And we've been helping customers worldwide ever since, over 100,000 folks building personal relationships through video. I would say also we just um, today, and so I know this will probably come out a bit later, but we just launched a book called Human Centered Communication. So it just came out on Amazon yesterday. You can get it there anywhere you buy books. It's fantastic. Written by our chief evangelist, Ethan Butte, and our chief marketing officer, Steve Pastinelli, two great friends. They've been with me in this thing for 10 years as well. And uh, we actually got 12 different authors to help us with this, just thought leaders who agree with us from all different um, points of view and different geographical places, but uh, CEOs and consultants and stuff that they agree that we need to think about this differently. And so if you like anything I've said about that, get that book, check it out. Check out Bomb Bomb, Bomb Bomb Become. We, um, we love to talk about this and help you guys get over this transition. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah, fantastic. And the link to the book will be below this video as well. So I encourage you to check it out and go take it, go check out Bomb Bomb as well. And, and, and just, you know, let's face it, you probably take videos all the time with your phone, you're probably outside with your family and friends, you know, so if you can do that, you can do this. So you just, <laughs> I think, I think there's a part of it. I think there's a part of it where yes, you need to encourage people. And sometimes you just need to say, get over it. It's there, like use it. <laughs> Every year I've been doing this, it's been the year of video. It, it's yeah. still early. You're going to stand out. You're going to make a difference. You're going to make an impact in someone else's life just because you decided to do this. Yeah, perfect. I love it. All right. Thanks, Darren. And thank you, thank you all John. for listening and watching. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.